what's up makale rasa out here in singapore back on it night owl podcast you know what it is i'm here today because i have a confession to make because um as as mm, i don't even know where to start <laughs> i'd like to think i'm a pretty decent person and i'm pretty good at what i do um but obviously i'm not a born strategist and i'm not a born business owner and i definitely am not a born adult i'm having trouble y'all so here's what i want to talk to you about right if you think about it a lot of people wait till the first of the month to start something new or on a Monday or a Sunday, maybe Sunday or Monday, normally because it's the beginning of the week, right? And then they wait for New Year, as in like, you know, December 31st, January 1st, you get all your, you know, um, resolutions out and you've decided, okay, this is the year I'm going to whatever. Yeah, the <laughs> 2019 to 2020, we were, we were planning some things and then, yeah, anyway, um, but I've been thinking about that a lot lately because I think I need to get the perfect timing to start something out of my freaking head. Honestly, I don't even know if it's good to start at night or in the daytime. I don't even know if it's good to start on a Sunday or a Monday. I don't know if the first of the month is a good idea, Um, mostly because I'm a procrastinator, like really bad and procrastinator and I have like short attention spans too so social media is not helping Uh, a lot of times I'll get on my phone and be like you know what I need to message so and so and tell her thank you for blah 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 and suddenly I'll see something on the on the feed and start scrolling and I forgot what the fuck I came to the phone for yeah it's worse than coming in and out of a room and not remembering what you went to the room for it's worse because it's on my phone it's in my hand this is how terrible it is my memory is going to shit so I was thinking about this because let's face it I was all gung-ho to start a Facebook I can't even speak, Facebook group on June 1st to try and help people at a lower cost so that they can get the help they need um, and it wouldn't be so expensive for them. But guess what? Black Lives Matter happened and I'm glad it did. I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but then I got sidetracked as well. And then I suddenly felt like really bad about maybe pushing my own services that had nothing to do with Black Lives Matter because maybe it would be taken away from Black Lives Matter. So there was that. And for a while, we were asked to Blackout Tuesday and promote all the black people that you know, their businesses, their talents, all that. I'm I'm happy to do it. I've been doing it all my life. I'm happy to do it. But that also meant that there was a clash in what I was trying to promote before that. And then suddenly it changes my messaging after that. And even though, even though I did a couple of um, videos about, you know, whether it's appropriate or not, this is like your your best time to prove that the things you've been selling or teaching all this time are actually usable, especially in a crisis like this, where it's still drawing attention to all the right things and promoting the right values and helping all of us become just better humans in general. But with that being said, I postponed my launch and didn't say another word about it. And I can only imagine what that does to my audience because I definitely did put up a couple posts saying, hey, hey. We're starting this in a couple of days time. I didn't, I didn't plan it very well. I did not give it the lead time that it needed to be able to get the word out. I did not go live every day trying to teach the same, I did not, (laughs) the same class every day for 30 days. That was the original um, idea. And yeah, I definitely tanked that. I think I did three days in a row and then I stopped. This is, this is very reminiscent of my, my commitment to fitness. It's, which is why I'm saying I have a confession to make you guys. I think my name is Rasati and I have a procrastination problem. And I also, along with the procrastination problem, I have a side serving of um, short attention span disorder. And I, yeah, I'm having trouble, y'all. <laughs> so what I decided was, I decided to look at what it is that um, gets me excited about starting something new. And to be honest, it's not a lot. I get excited when I have the impulse to do something, right? I'm like, oh my God, this is a great idea. I need to go do this. Because if I go back and look at my text messages and the things that I've been posting, I definitely started uh, May May 27th, I think. I started talking about, oh yeah, you know what? I need to do a Facebook group. And I started promoting that a little bit. And then of course, Black Lives Matter happened. And then I went on and kind of forgot it, left it by the wayside. And I did a couple of videos for Black Lives Matter. And then of course, my June video came out as far, not my video, my podcast came out about what my goals were. What were my goals? Oh yeah, I um, <clears throat> my eyes were bigger than my stomach. I definitely decided, oh yeah, I'm going to do all these things. It's a new month. I'm just going to go for it. And um fell short again I was going to do 30 days of uh, gratitude which is nothing I mean it's what five minutes if that of a video actually it's more like 
90 seconds. So I could talk about what it is that I think is important and just let it be that. What I'm grateful for, what do I have, what is so great today, you know, what should I be grateful for, all that stuff. And I didn't. I think I did three days of that and stopped. Um, I decided I was going to do a class every night and teach the same class every night. And I thought, okay, how do I teach the same class every night? I'm going to look like a complete lunatic. But then I thought, okay, maybe I can take different examples and teach based on the example. So the example would be different, but the things I teach would still be the same and it would still be applicable. So it tells the audience how flexible my coaching really is and how it could be applied to pretty much anything in your life. Did three days of that and completely quit as well. So then I was thinking about, okay, well, how do I do this? How do I get back to teaching what I teach and being, uh, you know, um, engaging with my audience and and um, being helpful again? Because guess what? It wasn't just that I was um, failing at the two challenges that I gave myself as in teaching and the gratitude. I also fell apart with the podcasting a little bit. I, I fell off with my posting a little bit. The, the energy got me all. It really did. It kind of kicked me in the gut and I definitely was winded for a while and it took me a while to kind of recover because not only is social media affecting my mood swings, um, but my own life has a couple of twists and turns all of a sudden. It's always, gosh, it lately has been always the new normal and I'm trying really hard to tread water and, and manage. Well, with all that being said, I finally realized that I just need to start. So I think I came across uh, Mel Robbins and her TED Talk about five seconds. And I I understood, now it's about applying. I understood because it's a very simple concept, but this shit is not easy. And what I'm trying to figure out is how to just stick with it, how to really make the five seconds count. So let me explain what she said, right? She says, throughout the day, you'll get an impulse. You get an impulse to go eat. You get an impulse to message somebody. You reach out to somebody. You have a thought that triggers another thought. And you're like, oh my gosh, you know, I should totally do this. And the trick to doing that something as in acting on the impulse is to do it within five seconds of having the impulse. But guess what? I don't even do that with my podcast. I write it down and I keep it somewhere. And then it depends on if I feel like it later to do it. Because maybe when I had the impulse, I wasn't in a place where I could stop everything and do the podcast episode. Like it might be because I'm listening to a podcast while I'm grocery shopping. So I really can't stop and record in the grocery store. I mean, I could, but the sound would be crap, okay? So I was trying really hard to figure out what to do and how to do it. And when I heard Mel say, you will never feel like doing it, it totally hit me. Oh my gosh, that's so, so, so true. I never feel like doing anything. And it's not to say that I'm completely lazy or I'm phlegmatic at all. It's just the fact that when the thought occurs to me, it depends on my mood. And a lot of times my mood is not, get up and go do it. You know, it's not like, it's not masculine at all. It's not action oriented. It's normally like, oh, wow, I understand. Cool. Next. So um, it took me a little bit to assimilate and apply what she was talking about. And I think, gosh, I think I have it sorted a little bit because what I'm understanding is if I think about all the resolutions and the best times to start things, I know for me, I need quiet in space. I can't be uh, thinking about what baby girl is doing. I can't be worried about, has she eaten yet? Is it lunchtime yet? I don't need to be worried about that. When I'm home by myself, I don't worry about lunchtime. If my stomach grumbles, I'll throw something in my mouth real quick and then I'll continue my work. I'm a workaholic. I did that while I was at work as well. I used to eat at my desk and complete my work. But when baby girl is home, I don't get to do that. So right now she's at school. Uh, Sorry, she's at home this week. What am I talking about? She's at home this week and I have to worry about what she's doing, whether she gets hungry or not, and um, making sure that she drinks water. So my my attention is completely scatterbrained and I have to work around that. Now, she's pretty good about when I tell her, hey, I need to go in the room and shut the door and record a podcast episode. Make sure you don't knock on the door or come in. Just give me a little bit and I'll be back out. So she's really good about that. But I also realized that when it comes to projects... I still have this stupid habit of looking at the Everest of it all, as in like I'm looking from the base of Everest and looking at the the mountaintop thinking, oh my God, I have so much work to do instead of focusing on the next step. And I know that if I work on my impulse control and then working those first five seconds right after the impulse, it would be a lot easier. But, but I haven't gotten to that place where the application is second nature yet. I still have to think about it. I still have to push myself. It's still effort to create the momentum and get started. And I know what that's like because I've had a couple of clients that have been going through the same thing. They've hit a plateau. They're not interested in doing anything different because what's the point? They've hit a plateau. They're not moving. And they feel like nothing they do will get them to move. It's not going to go forward. But I'm thinking about this as well. 
it doesn't take but five seconds to start doing something. I've been in situations where they're like, oh my God, I have 110,000 emails and I don't know what to do. And I'm like, well, start with the first one. It's real easy to give the advice, trust me. But for me to apply to my life, I have a little trouble and I'm being honest with you guys. So what I found is lately, I need to start on making a list. I'm really bad at not making a list lately. And it can be either the night before or in the morning. As soon as I map out what I need to do with my day, then I can think about when is the best time to do some of these things. Because obviously I can't make lunch um, at dinner time. I need to organize it in such a way so that there are priorities to my tasks. Um, Once I get that done though, it's a matter of, oh my gosh, I need to do this video for an audition. When am I going to do it? Instead of saying, when am I going to do it? If I have you know, some time to work with, I might as well just get started now. And it's the act of getting started. That's what the five seconds is for, in my opinion. You get started. You start moving towards it. You dedicate the next five minutes to doing part of this project. And generally, your energy catches on. You get kind of like excited about the work and you will generally not stop until the task is completed. Unless, of course, acted upon by an outside force like someone knocking at your door or a baby girl getting hungry or I don't know. Because I have lost hours by just focusing on my work before. I, I, I'm capable of that. It's just a matter of getting to that place. So, like I said, I had a set of goals for June and a lot of them I did not follow through on, but it's up to me to recognize that I didn't follow through on it and feel bad about the fact that I didn't follow through on it and do something different the next time. And part of that is not waiting until the next month, not waiting until the next Sunday or the next Monday, not waiting until the next morning. If I can get it done now, I should get it done. Because if I think about the way I started way back in the beginning, three years ago, when I first started the podcast and the blog and everything, I did not go to sleep until I was satisfied with the work that I put through. And sometimes I stayed up all night. Now I am a night owl by design. I think I have my best energy when I know the rest of the world is asleep. I feel pretty good about that. But lately with baby girl um, going off to school, my my priority is to make sure I wake up on time to get her to school in time. And then I have space again while she's at work where there's no one here to interrupt me or ask me any questions. My mom's not here at the moment. My uncle's not here at the moment. I don't have any roommates at the moment. I have no excuses. But even still, I I do have situations where I have found um, excuses anyway. But being cognizant of the fact, making sure that I understand that, you know, I have a limited amount of time to get things done has been part of the adulting process. The other thing is because I'm a business owner, I have no one above me telling me when things are due. I'm in charge of that, which is a terrible, terrible thing. But in order for me to become the best that I possibly can be, I need to be cognizant of all these things. So my decision today is to make sure that I start with a clean slate every morning. I try the best I can to plan out what I need to get done the night before. So when I wake up, I already have an idea of what I need to focus on. And then to be able to cross things off a list, that's my favorite part of all. So I like being able to cross things off, which also means that I need to stay focused and get the work started. The starting part is a little bit hard. A lot of times, if my computer is taking a long time to load something, I will walk away from the computer and go do something else. Or if the work has to be on my phone, as in like uh, I'm looking for images that I can use for my posts, uh, because I do use WordSwag and Pinterest a lot so that I can create the kind of um, Instagram post that would be appropriate for the message I'm trying to send out, I get sidetracked a lot. And that's been another thing. I need to rein in where my attention is going because I will lose a half an hour easy just fucking around and scrolling. So for those of you who've been having a tough time of it lately, if you're having hit a plateau and feeling like, oh my God, I can't get anything done. Or maybe you just, you've been in a funk because the energies have been crazy outside uh, on social media with the planets. I don't know if you believe all that stuff or not, but it's been a lot going on. A lot of people complaining about all kinds of stuff and it's just been overwhelming, I think is an understatement. So if you're going through something like that, I would like to remind you that Mel Robbins did talk about this concept of the five second rule. Uh, Basically, it comes down to you have an impulse, use the next five seconds to do something about it. And in those five seconds, you got to be really careful not to get sidetracked, which is my problem at the moment. So if you have any other questions, let me know in the comments below. Anything else you're struggling with, let me know so I can actually, you know, plan the next episode or whatever. But in the meantime, all the best to you. I know the struggle you're in because I'm not immune, you guys. I'm still going through it. So I love you and I'll catch you again soon.